my co-sponsors, Carlos, Leslie, Harry, the rest of the council, all of our activist members here today, we could not have gotten engaged without all of this participation. We would not have gotten this far, but we got here because we were all together working towards community oversight and civilian control of the police department, and let's take also control of our respective neighborhoods. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alderperson Sawyer. And up next, another one of our chief co-sponsors, Alderperson Harry Osterman. I'm really proud to be here with all of you today uh, in this historic moment where we pass civilian oversight in the Chicago Police Department. This is a long time coming. It's about rebuilding trust between communities and the police that will add to safety in Chicago, which is something no matter where you are in the city, no matter what neighborhood, there's something that all of us deeply, deeply care about. It would not have happened without all of the people here and the hundreds and thousands of people that they represent in neighborhoods around the city of Chicago. It's their hard work, the stories that they've heard, the stories that they've lifted up to us, the elected officials, to bring us here today where we got 36 votes from a cross-section of people that represent the city of Chicago. And this is a starting point to move us in a better direction, to lift up our neighborhoods, to bring true safety. You cannot have true safety in Chicago unless the community is at the table and driving policy. So I'm proud to be here. I want to thank Carlos Ramirez Rosa. I want to thank my good friend, Rod Sawyer, who worked with me on this for many years, Leslie Harrison, Ray Lopez, all the other aldermen you're going to hear from today who will come out here. but. There's been a lot of hard work in the community organizations, and this is also a compromise. People had to sit down and compromise, including the mayor. And uh, But today's a historic day to move us forward for a safer Chicago. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. And up next, uh, our last of the four chief co-sponsors, Alderperson Leslie Hairston. Uh, the last time I was standing up like this, um, it, I was the only one in city council uh, that was supporting and the community oversight uh, committee. I am very happy six years later to have a whole bunch of support, at least 36 members of the city council standing with me and all of you that have stood with me and walked with me and marched with me and met with me and met with each other and met with other groups and we met until we met until we couldn't meet anymore and we continued meeting but this is how you get stuff done and we got it done you know as, as i listen to people talk about what this means or what this doesn't mean we would not have to be here but for the history of the city of Chicago and the relationship between the Chicago Police Department and it primarily its black and brown citizens. So when we hear people talk about, well, you know, this is anti-police, no it's not. What we are anti is we are anti-racism. We are anti-torture. We are anti-everything that these communities have suffered for decades. And it didn't just start yesterday. And the city has been paying for decades. And we changed the names of the organizations and we changed the heads of the organizations, but we never changed how we approach it and what we do. And that's what we have done today. We have changed the way in which we conduct business here in the city of Chicago when it comes to the people, because now we are all at the table. Thank you all. And congratulations. Thank you very much. And now we're going to hear from Alderman Ray Lopez. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Alderman Raymond Lopez, and I'm sure some of you are kind of wondering why I'm here. It's real easy. The passage of civilian oversight 
isn't anti-police. It's about Chicago. It's about restoring the legitimacy of law enforcement in the eyes of the people of the city of Chicago. That is what the advocates have fought for. That is what the advocates have persevered for 16 months under this administration and years before the last one. We are here today because no longer should people be second guessing what happens when police do their jobs. If you have civilian oversight, the power is in the hands of the people that are impacted by the police department. That is why we're here. Because there will be a day in Chicago once more where the citizens have trust in, the law, in their officers, in the brave men and women who we call when we need them most. That is why I'm here. I'm here because we together can restore the legitimacy of law enforcement. This is the step forward to do it, and I am so proud to join the aldermen and all the activists here who made this happen. The fight continues and it's here because of all of you. Thank you. And now we're going to hear from some of the amazing activists and community members and organizational leaders who have been fighting for this uh, for so long and who have spent so much time and effort into making it happen. And first we're going to hear from Sidney Wallace from the Jewish Council on Urban Affairs. Forgive me everybody, I, I had to write it down. I feel like I feel like they just voted on like the last five years of my life. I've been working on this. As he said, my name is Sydney Wallace. I'm a board member of the Jewish Council on Urban Affairs. When I joined JCUA over four years ago, I immediately dived into police accountability through our partnership with GAPA, attending meetings and community conversations throughout the city, brainstorming hours, countless hours of brainstorming and debating and education and, and frustration and negotiation and finally we are able to celebrate this small but mighty step forward. <laughs> societies, societies work best when everyone agrees on the rules set forth to, to, to control a more equitable Chicago. <laughs> Thank you so much. Up next, we are going to hear from older person, Sophia King. My 89 year old mother. I was in Des Moines. No, no. No, no. She's doing great. She's doing great. I did all kinds of oral interviews with her. Wounds from the battlefield. That's right. You put them on Facebook. No, this is. Definitely, I'm proud to be a part of this landmark uh, legislation that will only make our communities more safe. Um, I, I want to just acknowledge for a moment the way our Progressive Caucus came together. Uh, we voted unanimously as a caucus. Yes. That's right. That's worth, that's worth celebrating um, to bring this ordinance home. Uh, more importantly, we had the great leadership of a number of the sponsors of this ordinance. I think you've probably already heard from them, but it bears repeating Alderman Sawyer, Alderman Hairston, Alderman Ramirez Rosa, who really championed this cause That's right. for the long term for us. Uh, we worked with coalitions. Shout out especially to GAPA and CPAC for all the work they've right. done over the years to champion this. Uh, joined by labor with SEIU. Uh, this is really the people's ordinance. That's right. Um, it will really, truly bring and empower our communities uh, to have better public safety. So I'm just proud to have played a very small part in this and want to thank uh, my colleagues and everybody here for all the hard work that we put into it. But now the real work begins to heal our city. Um, we have a lot of healing to do, uh, but I am encouraged uh, by this ordinance, by the passing of this ordinance, and know that we can do it. So thank you to everybody who's here. Thank you to everybody who played a significant part. I look forward to working with you all. Thank you.
next we're going to hear from next we're going to hear from older person Jeanette Taylor. My older woman. So I guess this is what real democracy looks like. Huh? Damn straight. We talk about it all the time, but too often we don't get to feel it. And so today is not only about the two coalitions that got together and showed what folks of color could do when they want to see real change in the community, but let us not forget Rakia Boyd, Ronnie Mann Johnson, Laquan McDonald, and Ivan right. Toledo. Say their names. So their families finally could get a little peace. None of us know the pain of losing their child, especially to people who are supposed to serve and protect. But we know in this city, they pick and choose who they serve and protect. And so today, like, I got all these mixed emotions. Like, I'm happy that this has happened. We still got a long way to go. We got some more fighting and cussing and fussing to do. But this is what happens when you send organized to city council. <laughs> Up next, we're going to hear from Alderman Andre Vasquez. Did we do it? Yes. Is the work finished? No. Just want to make sure we all are on the same page. Um, I'm elated that we were able to get this passed. It took a ton of work. It took coalition. It took people in the streets. Uh, and the people who are in the streets they weren't doing it for fun, they were doing it because they've had the experience and had to live here and have been harassed by police. And now, we're able to say that Chicago has the most progressive and transformative legislation in the country as it pertains to civilian oversight. And I think we all need to be happy about that. We have a lot more work to do, but I want to thank all the coalition partners, all the people that came to the table, the GAPA, CPAC folks, for all their help. And I want to make sure that we're understanding what kind of moment this is. When we deal with the things that we deal with in the city, we have people that are going through trauma because of COVID, because of living under what police have been like here, the misconduct, the violence, the amount of settlements we've had to pay off. This is the right thing for the city to have done. And I'm glad that we were able to do it. So we can take care of everybody, including our friend up here. Much respect, thank y'all for everything you do. And we're going to continue fighting. Thank y'all so much. Up next, we're going to hear from uh, someone whose name you've probably heard a lot before, and he's been working on this for a while and putting in a lot of effort uh, from the Inner City Muslim Action Network, Desmond Yancey. Well, brother. Uh, we did it, right? Yes. And we did it because all of us played a role in this. And again, I want to thank all the people who came and stood with us and worked with us over the last five years. I want to thank folks from Carper, uh, especially my brother Frank Chapman, who, if yes. it wasn't for his leadership, I don't know where this would be. I also want to thank our sponsors, uh, my alderman, Alder Person Harrison. All right. Alderman Ramirez Rosa, Alderman Sawyer, and Alderman Osterman, uh, and also Chairman King, Chairwoman King. But I got to give a special shout out to my sister. She's still here, Alder Person Taylor, because she was the one who was instrumental in making sure that these two coalitions came together to do this amazing work. And so again, I'm grateful for this opportunity. Our work isn't done, but I'm gonna be right there with you. So come on, let's do it. And this is my son Jacob. He's the reason why I do this work. All right, Jacob. Drum major instinct. Drum major instinct. Up next, we're going to hear from Nate Sanders from Southsiders Organized for Unity and Liberation, also known as Soul. Hello, my name is Nate Sanders, and I'm an executive board member and leader with Southsiders Organized for Unity and Liberation, also All right. known as Soul. All right. We are proud to stand with the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression in the fight to pass ECPS, the Empowering Communities for Public Safety Ordinance, the People's Ordinance. This ordinance is the first step in achieving the ultimate goal, which is to provide public safety to the neighborhoods in Chicago that need it most. And this has been a long time coming. 
For decades, the prevailing thought has been the only way to provide public safety is to toughen up the police force, toughen up on punishment, and to rough up the neighborhoods with as much force as possible and beat these criminals into submission. However, through the violent efforts of the police and through all the money that has been given to the police, they have yet to stop crime or make the city any safer. The ECPS ordinance is legislation that is intent to change all of that. It starts the process of giving oversight of the police to the communities that the police are supposed to be keeping safe. It is the first of its kind to give the victims of police misconduct a voice on who can police and how policing happens. Yeah. Now why did this first step happen? How did this first step happen? There we go. <laughs> it happened through the demands of the people. That's right. The people throughout the city of Chicago and every neighborhood stood together to demand a new and transformative way of addressing the problem of safety in the city. But this is only the first step. The city council as a whole and the mayor herself finally realized that they have no choice but to stand with the people and create this historical legislation. But I hope that they don't think that this means we will sit down and shut up. No. No, we will not take our little asses and go sit down somewhere. <laughs> we got this far by not being quiet, by not sitting our asses down anywhere. In fact, it was because we were loud in the streets that this happened. We were loud on the telephone and through emails demanding aldermen to stand with the people. And if we want to truly see our communities empowered for public safety, which is our ultimate goal, then we are going to have to continue to be loud in demanding what we want from our public officials, yeah. that they will need to hear us moving forward. So I challenge all of us here and those who are with us but couldn't make it out, and the aldermen that have been standing with us to continue to fight until we fully see the empowerment that our communities need for public safety. The resources that neighborhoods in certain areas get, all areas deserve. Right. Affordable housing, food, mental health facilities, yes. clean and affordable water for all residents in the city of Chicago, even safe, fun, and play opportunities for our children, right. which means, but it's not limited to, clean and safe public parks and recreation. I challenge us to get louder in demanding what we need and what we want from the city, that we turn the volume all the way the fuck up. And I challenge the ultimate to legislate based on listening to the people of the community versus legislating based on what you personally think is best or whatever special interests that you have had to align yourself with to get elected. All power to the people. Up next from Community Renewal Society, Michelle Page Jones. This has been a long time coming. I'm a mom, a sister, an aunt, and a daughter. This is just the first step. I remember a long, long time ago, many meetings, late night meetings, over the city, far and wide. But this is not it. This is not, this is just the beginning. Right. And the fight that we must continue. That's right. Thank you. Yeah. Up next from Arab American Action Network, Mohammed Sankari. and congratulations to the coalition, the ECPS coalition. We did what we said we would do, which is to come and pass the people's ordinance. But right, like so many others have said, and like my brother from Seoul said, this is not the end. This isn't even the first step. This isn't even the first complete first step because the spirit of this ordinance came from 
63rd Street in Halstead in about 2012, and Frank can correct me if I'm wrong, in which families of people who had been murdered by the Chicago Police Department, one after the other, came up and told their stories in the heart of the community. And after that, there was another people's hearing, and another people's hearing, and the movement continued to grow and grow and grow. We celebrate and thank the Alder people who signed on to this legislation, but, this, but the Chicago Alliance had over 60,000 community members through tabling that they had signed up for community control of the police. And that is our ultimate demand. This is the first step in a long movement that we will fight until we secure complete community control over the Chicago Police Department. Let's celebrate today, let's wake up early tomorrow, and let's hit the streets again until we have our city under the, peop the, under the control of the people of Chicago. Thank you very much. Just a couple more speakers to go. Up next, Chairperson of the Black Caucus, Jason Irvin. Hey, this is a, uh, let's first, just want to thank all of the supporters of this ordinance. Uh, this has been a six year, seven year uh, fight. And uh, what happened today was something that no one, we never thought would happen when this ordinance was filed some six years ago. So I just want to thank all of the citizens, the, the pushing from the activist community. We also want to thank the, uh, everyone that's been involved in this process because this is a day for us all to look at this as a step forward. This is not the end. This is another step in the process for helping to protect our communities, helping to protect our young ones, helping to protect our women, and helping to protect our babies. Thank you and God bless. As you probably know, the labor movement has been a really strong ally on this and has put in so much work and effort to make sure that we pass the hurdles that we faced. Up next, we're gonna hear from Anthony Driver from SEIU Healthcare, Illinois, Indiana. Thank you, everybody. Um, this has been a long time coming. This is a historic moment in the city of Chicago. The passage of the ECPS ordinance today will literally take Chicago from worst in the country to first on the continent when it comes to police accountability, police oversight, building trust within the communities, and the residents of the city of Chicago having a voice and a strong say-so in what public safety looks like in our community. There's no law like this that exists in this entire country. Chicago is now a template for other cities, and it is our hope that this will set the precedent for more major cities to follow suit. This will provide a platform for everyday citizens. This is about trust, this is about accountability, this is about oversight. Now everyday citizens who would like to have a voice in public safety can gather 2,000 signatures and have someone, a commission that's dedicated, a dedicated public body to addressing the needs of our community. Things have been trending down for a long time in Chicago. We've almost grown accustomed to chaos in this city. And it's about time that the residents of this city, and I, if I must say, the members of, the 90,000 members of SEIU Healthcare, Illinois, Indiana, That's right. have a decisive voice in that process. That's right. We, I've gotten the question over and over since I've had the privilege to work with this coalition. Why does SEIU care so much about this issue? Why is labor in this? Why did 17 labor unions sign on to support this? Why did a coalition for the first time of black labor leaders sign on to a letter to urge the black caucus to support this issue? Why is this only one of two ordinances that the black caucus has pushed for and stood strong for and almost passed unanimously with the vote of every uh, black alderman. Why did the Latino caucus endorse this? Why did the Progressive caucus endorse this? Why did the Democratic Socialist caucus endorse this? And the reason is simple. Chicagoans have demanded for over a decade, going back as far as the 1970s, back to the John Burge torture victims. The 60s. The 60s. <laughs> they have demanded more. And here at SCLU Healthcare, we, are, we not only care about our members in the workplace, 
We care about the community they go home to. That's right. Historically, the labor movement in Chicago has been strong. For black Americans specifically, for brown Americans specifically, for black and brown Chicagoans, traditionally, the church and the faith community who stood strong in this ordinance and pushed this movement, and also the labor, the labor unions which have been a vehicle for our members and a political voice have been at the table. Uh, I, I have an actual script, but if I can go off moment and, and personally thank the, thank the members of SCIU Healthcare, for me personally, as a young man who grew up in the back of the yard Inglewood community, 10 years ago, almost exactly in the month of July, Officer Marco Prano killed a very close friend of mine. The same city council that passed his ordinance today is the same one that approved the settlement and his murder. He was never held accountable. In fact, he was given an accommodation by Superintendent Jody Weiss just two years later. As I was a young man at Howard University sitting in my dorm room, that same officer fired shots into a car of black teenagers, and he finally lost his job. And in that whole process, I couldn't help but think, I don't have a voice in this. Nobody cares. Nobody cares when he, mur when he murdered Nico husband, and nobody cared when he all opened fire into that car of black teenagers. Today, I have a voice. That's right. Come on, Anthony. Today, the black and brown community has a voice. Yes. Today, the black and brown community will not be dictated to. Today, our members will not be dictated to. Today, we will have a decisive voice on how our communities are policed and in public safety. Thank you. Up next, from the Chicago Alliance Against Racist and Political Repression, Mr. Frank Chapman. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Y'all know how I do it. All power to the people. 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 That's what I'm talking about. You know, I've been involved in this struggle for a long time. I, I, I don't boast about my age and I'm lucky I got here. In fact, it's a mystery to me how I got here in terms of my age. But, uh, I want to do what's right. See how this got started. A young, brilliant black man who was also a great revolutionary. And his name was Fred Hampton. And Fred Hampton. He, he, was a, he was a martyr for this movement. He was a martyr for this movement. The police assassinated him, killed him in his bed after they had drugged him. And it took years before the truth finally got out about that so powerful and so strong that the not even made a movie about it. But that's how we got started. Fred Hempton started the first rainbow coalition in this city. He was the first one to try to unite the north side, the south side, and the west side. He was the one who tried to unite black and brown and white in the fight. He said, fight racism with solidarity. That's what he said. I ain't going to say the other part because I don't want to run some of y'all away. <laughs> but this is a coalition that is the realization of Fred's dream. This is a coalition which is the only kind of coalition that could have won this fight. This is a coalition where all of the people, where well, all of the people in Chicago, whether they live on the north side, whether they live on the south side, the southwest side, or the west side, where well, all the people of Chicago was brought together in united action to make this happen. This is a historic day. Everybody else has already said it, so I don't need to repeat nothing. But let me say why this is a historic day. Because now, we in the communities that have been abused by the police historically, that have been occupied by the police, we now have a voice. Okay, come on, leave me alone. We, we, now, we now have a voice in who polices our community and how our communities are policed. And we're going to keep that voice. All right. 
Right. And we're going to fight for the implementation of that law. Right. All power to the people. All power to the people. Yes, thank you very much for coming out. Before we go, I just want us all to remember that we must and we will continue the fight. We will continue the fight not just for more community control of the police, but the fight to demand that all Chicagoans be given a chance to recover not just from the pandemic, but from the disinvestment that has been ongoing for decades. We will continue to demand that the upcoming budget support the people, especially those facing unemployment, eviction, lack of mental health resources, and so much more. The Chicago Rescue Plan and City Council, an ordinance prioritizing our communities and drafted by them, is a great example of how we can begin to do that. We need treatment, not trauma. We need housing, not trauma. We need investment and jobs and grocery stores and education and health care, not more trauma. Thank you all for coming. The fight continues. If you have any questions, we'll take them.